Hey gang, it's Sebastian back with another video for you today. Eccentric Molecules has three new fragrances coming out very soon. Uh, the M1 collection and they are taking Molecule 1 and adding uh, some really great notes like patchouli or mandarin orange or iris. So uh, I've got Geza shown here who is the perfumer behind these fragrances and we're going to discuss these new fragrances. So tell me a little bit about the, the new collection, Geza. <clears throat> Hi there, thanks for having me. Um, the, the, the new collection is, um, or was originally based on kind of like an accident, if you really like, when my partner Sophie, um, I noticed that whenever I would show her some fragrances or stuff I was working on, she would always like those with an iris note, with a strong iris note. And so I showed her the ingredient and she absolutely loved um, that particular quality I have here. And she said, can you not make me a fragrance just with iris? So I thought, yeah, I can try. But then just iris on its own, as it is, is beautiful, but maybe not has got the, you know, the, the, the overall beauty as a fragrance. So I thought, how can I wrap this? But how can I wrap it simple so nothing overlayers the beauty of the iris itself? And, you know, lazy as I am, I took a big chunk of Icy Super and um, combined that with the iris note plus some hedione to wrap it all up in. And that was it. So Sophie started wearing the fragrance and she received lots of compliments and people stopped her on the street and said how, how beautiful she'd smell. So mm -hmm. at some point I thought, you know, that's great that this works, that you can have just Icy Super Molecular One with just sort of like one other you know, thing like a rose or a patchouli or a mandarin or an iris that I showed it to my partners in London and they, yeah, they tried it themselves and they got the same kind of compliments and thought, you know, why don't we just do that, something with that? So the idea was born to have just Icy Super in an enormous amount, but it was just one other. And we decided to go for the, the iris, the patchouli and mandarin. Oh, cool. Well, patchouli is my favorite note uh, out of anything in the world. So I'm okay. glad you have one with patchouli. And I've been wearing that one the most and I quite enjoy it. Um, so I was going to ask you, so when you first decided to go with the collection, were you testing out other notes and you settled with the three or you just thought these three are going to work the best with the, the Molecule One uh, ISOE Super? The yeah, the, the iris one was set. That was what initiated it all. Um, and then I tried maybe like 10 other things, among which, for example, you know, I, I thought I'm not a big sort of sweet fan or vanilla, you know, isn't really my thing for perfumery. But I thought, you know, why not? I've, I've never tried like 70, 80 percent of like a good icy super quality with vanilla. Mm. Never occurred to me that, you know, why, why? And so, and that was rubbish, didn't work. I tried different vanilla types and with lots of ICE, but it didn't really, didn't really resonate with me. Um, so at the end, yeah, Iris as a hard note within a fragrance, if you like, floral, transparent, fresh, um, patchouli as a base note and mandarin as a top note. So each, or well, I was hoping that the molecular one lovers would appreciate that they can still have their molecular one with that fragrance, but there's one other aspect with it, mm. but just one. Well, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you. How are we wearing these fragrances when you're using Mandarin Orange? Does it appear in the top notes or is that how these fragrances are meant to be uh, you know, thought of? As Is it a top note and then the ISOE uh, Super is a base note? Is that how it's worn? Absolutely. I mean, Icy yeah. Super is an all free, um, definitely a base note, a carrier, which, you know, is a good skeleton for the physique of a fragrance, if you like. Um, and Mandarin, yeah, is, has a big top note and then kind of dries down fairly quickly. So I would say after 10, 15 minutes, the ISOE kicks in and you have what you've known always, if you like that product. Mm -hmm. um, with Patchouli, obviously, that lasts much longer. I mean, you as a Patchouli lover, you know how mm -hmm. that can last like a whole day, probably yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So, so then, um, so Patchouli base note, Iris heart. So the Mandarin is the top note of the three. So for all stage 
stages within the fragrance, you now have the chance to add something to it if you want to. Interesting. You also mentioned Rose. Is that one of the other potential future uh, M1 M plus collection <laughs> fragrances you might be doing? Not, yeah, not so sure, to be honest. Um, it's, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I, I love Rose. Who wouldn't? It's such a pleasant, if you have a good quality Rose natural anyway, or if you, if you create your own Rose base, that's all wonderful. But um, it's a bit like sort of, you know, yes, there's lavender, but okay, there's other stuff, but that. So the old traditional things I think are, they've had their time. And for us, definitely these three, the way they work, um, qualified first. We have already a couple of more um, I'm working on for another pair, another three actually for next spring. Oh, wow. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's good fun. It's really fun working on that. Yeah. So one of the things you mentioned, vanilla didn't work for you. And this is uh, one of the things I recommend some of my subscribers. I usually layer molecule one or molecule two, but mostly molecule one with vanillic fragrances that are kind of very one dimensional. So it does work for me and it, it kind of extends the life. So is it because you, you're not such a fan of vanilla that you weren't finding the, 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 the matches uh, working or is that something you would have in the future for us? Yeah, I mean, probably as well. Um, but, you know, unlike lots of fragrances, we know where you have a large percentage of vanillin basically in them. So to make them really sweet, like cashmere from Chopin or God knows all the oriental fragrances, they have lots of vanillin. Um, I'm just, I think, not really thrilled by sweetness as an ingredient, as many other people are, and absolutely fair enough so. But um, sweet and gourmands and kind of too sticky, candy, fruity isn't really mine. I just don't get much out of it, um, really. So, um, yeah, that's why certain things at the end just didn't make it. There they was like, oh, God, it smells a bit odd. No, there's something better. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you mean. So uh, then, since I do recommend Molecule One as a layering tool or you know, you know, like a booster for some fragrance wares, would you consider these three versions as same thing? Would, would that work or are they meant to be just worn as they are? I, I mean, just really every single product we do is for the start meant to be worn on its own as mm -hmm. yeah, if totally. you take for example the molecular one is like one of the simplest forms of smelling something which is which has an olfactoric shape so can't have less than this yeah other chemicals obviously as well but this is just one and then the eccentrics are the full complex fragrance the homage to the molecule and so now there's just a chance for the molecule or one lovers if they want they can have something to it, not again an overall fragrance with it, like in the centric fragrances, but just this one thing. If you're a Mandarin lover, you would have to smell that to see if that isn't something, you know, you could like. Um, and I mean, I was going to ask you the patchouli thing, you know, in um, M plus patchouli, I used 5% of um, a patchouli oil quality where you, where the top note is cut off. So it's like just the patchouli heart. And um, then I use an additional two and a half percent of a classic patchouli oil, which has a top note. But if you have that too much, you always will have this medicinal top note because patchouli just has that with camphor and a bony oil. So how about you? I mean, do, do you go to the full? Do you also sometimes wear patchouli oil on its own? No, always as a fragrance. And I, I like what I'm experiencing here. For me, these fragrances are airy, which is what I like. And they are long lasting. And, uh, and you, you, know, you usually don't smell it too much. But when you're starting to move around, your body's heating up, then you can kind of start smelling the fragrance. But it's usually other people reacting to the fragrance normally. So what I'm experiencing here, again, similar to just wearing Molecule One on its own, but with that patchouli kick, which I really, really like. So uh, it works great. Um, I loved cool. it. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Oh, thanks. Does that, does that answer your question, though? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What, what else I wanted to find out was, um, are there 
other versions you're going to create with the other uh, notes in the future? Is that something that you plan on doing with uh, eccentric molecules like molecule two or? Yeah, you see, there is for some already a, a technical problem, like for example, molecule three, I couldn't have um, in, in such a high dosage, like I have IC super, you know, like 70, 80%, just one ingredient. Veteral acetate wouldn't pass the test with IFRA. Just that on its own wouldn't be really possible to have an enormous amount of one molecule mm. and then have the plus addition to it. So amoxan, similar problem. You can't have more than 13 or 14% of amoxan in a fragrance because if you then have a high dosage of that oil, it might recrystallize back out of the finished product because so much amoxan, it's a crystal and that can crystallize out when it gets cold or when it ages a bit. So that wouldn't be too good. Um, Java Null, my God, you do really just don't need too much of that stuff. So um, very little is fine. And Kashmiran is probably the closest to ISOE. I could imagine that, but then, I think IC Super is just the perfect skeleton for probably anything to have and to have this sophisticated cocooning, velvety, woody note effect, which is so likable. Cool. So what is it about ISOE Super and Molecule One that's so popular? It's got such a huge cult following. I've introduced it to friends that are not fragrance lovers or perfume lovers, and they just totally go gaga over it. I, what what is it about it? Can you tell? It's yeah. Um, it's it's a weird combination of I think with this particular molecule of two things. Once you have the olfactoric sensation, so you can smell it. It has a cedar wood like smell, but then it has this vibrant kind of you know it's like iridescent. It moves. There is a physicality almost to when you smell it, which is I think almost like it can do like an addiction. And then there are these moments which you will know when people actually want to smell it again because they caught it once. And so they realize what that is and how that smells. And then they want to smell it again and can't get it in. You know, so like the nose has already like blocked this off and you can't have more. Like you could have a lemon with every breath you take, you know, it's a lemon, it's a lemon. Mm -hmm. So, but what we, what the, um, the research team of Professor Dr. Hans Hutt has just found out a few years ago, um, I, when I met him, I mean, he, he does some, some basic research in how we actually physically smell, how that still works within the body and all the cells and um, the mechanism it has. And he said they're also, they're also checking out on how a singular cell reacts towards an injection of a fragrant ingredient. I know it sounds totally weird, but they can do that technically. So he has injected all sorts of, you know, molecules from perfumery, but most of the standard things like, I don't know, limonene, citronellol, phenyl ethyl alcohol, you know, standard ingredients. And nothing had really ever happened um, mm -hmm. during these uh, scientific research. And then when I met him, I said, why don't you take something cool and give the cells something which is really, you know, which <laughs> is just an exciting ingredient and which smells better. And then he, I also gave him IC Super and I spoke to him a couple of months later and said, what happened when you did these tests? Well, how did the cells react? And he said, the cell started to dance. <laughs> wow. Plus, they then took this further and made tests where they could check out the pheromonal reaction of the body towards something which is given to cells. And they found that IC Super does stimulate one of our five remaining pheromone receptors. Oh, wow. So there is obviously a physical reaction with it, which explains that some people just go gaga, as you've just said uh, before. It's, it has a beautiful olfactoric smell, and then it does this physical thing on top of it, which I think then causes sort of the success of the product just because someone who walks in front of you and it just smells so nice. You just want that yourself sort of thing. I think, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. One last question. Um, what is, why is it that sometimes when you're first smelling molecule one, people can't smell. I mean, that's one of the biggest complaints I get is I don't smell anything. I can't smell anything. It smells like alcohol. What, why is it that? Cause it did, it did happen with me as well. 
I was nose blind to it. Finally, it just popped like that. <laughs> Why does that happen? Yeah, it's, um, I think I probably couldn't even explain it in full, but what I know is, well, first of all, IC Super is a large molecule. It has brilliant radiance, but it's different from its in the vapor pressure in the sense like a lemon oil that just wants to evaporate, wants to go off quickly, orange oil, all the fresh stuff. And it's so intense, you get it into your nose with every breath you take, it jumps in and then jumps out again. And next breath, you, you take it in again, and then it's already gone. Some molecules might sit on the receptors for a while and block it, which is why you can't smell IC Super after the second or third time. It just doesn't work. Your, your nose is already full and it still sits in you, right? Oh, wow. And so it best is to judge, in, indeed, I think, when someone else wears it and you come across and there's just this whiff of sophisticated, woody, dry warmth, if you like, coming towards you. And it smells so nice. And But that's it. There's nothing else. It's just this little moment. And that's why some people have a hard time. Also because the expectation might be too big. You know, when you, when you hear, oh, this is a perfume. It sits in a bottle with a pump spray. You know, I expect some proper fragrance. And then comes out this really subtle, hard-to-get juice um i understand that some people struggle with this definitely interesting cool well this is exciting this is something i've wanted for a long time unique versions of the original molecule one so uh it's great that you're launching it and one of them happens to be my favorite note as i said so great Thanks great so stuff much, yeah um so the launch date is very soon correct uh, yeah March it's like when 21st or 23rd or something? 23rd, yeah, March 23rd. Great, cool. Any last things you want to mention before we end our call? God, no, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> no, listen, it's been um, lovely uh, that you guys have me within your little um, show there. And um, yeah, I hope that people get a chance to smell the three new fragrances so they can give it a go and um, see what we've done there. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for watching today. Uh, today's video on the M Plus collection from Eccentric Molecules with um, Geza Schoen, who is the perfumer behind the brand. I will do a full review of all three fragrances, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.